Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today on a video around Microsoft Graph. And today we have here Mike McLean. Thank you for joining us, Mike. Thanks so much for having me, Ian. I'm really excited to be here and speak with you about Office 365 Groups. Great. So how about you start by sharing some context about the groups and um, groups in relationship to our collaboration platform. Great. Well, Office 365 Groups truly power all of the teamwork experiences that we see today across Microsoft 365. We really look at Office 365 Groups as the foundational membership service that ties together a lot of these collaboration experiences that we've enabled in our apps and services. Great. How about um, the opportunity for developers, and what are some of the core capabilities that we offer through the Groups API? Well, there are a lot of different places across the suite where users create Office 365 Groups today. Every time you create a new team in Microsoft Teams, or you create a new SharePoint uh, team site, or you create a group in Outlook or Yammer, you're actually creating an Office 365 Group under the covers. Mm -hmm. uh, these experiences are great, but we know that there are a lot of different ways that customers need to extend our group creation processes to meet the diverse needs of their business. Uh, that's why Microsoft Graph is a perfect place to expose all of these entities and really provide access uh, to a unified API uh, with which our customers and partners can build their solutions. So what are some of those scenarios that our partners are building? Well, when you look at the content that we've published today in our conceptual documentation on docs.microsoft.com, uh, we highlight the fact that we uh, provision Office 365 groups with a connected set of resources. So every time you create an Office 365 group, you have a SharePoint team site, you have a calendar, a mailbox where you can, um, where you can perform conversations, uh, and a whole host of other assets. Uh, in addition to that, that, through Microsoft Graph, we've exposed uh, a lot of different actions, such as the ability to create and provision a group, the ability to modify membership, the ability to uh, renew a group, and even delete an Office 365 group. When you uh, go a little bit deeper into the actual APIs that, that we've built, um, not only do we expose the ability to perform various management functions, but we also expose the ability to access the content that's related to, to that group as well. Uh, so you can really dive in and retrieve things like the calendar events that are scheduled for this group, uh, the conversations that have been sent, and then, like I said, modify membership. Great. So um, how about we see it in action and you show us a demo of the capabilities of the API? Yeah, let's, let's take a look. Uh, so here in Graph Explorer, I am logged in as a user in my Office 365 tenant. Uh, and here what I'm going to do is just perform a quick query uh, against a group that I have in Azure Active Directory. Uh, when I'm working with my Office 365 groups, they're all stored here in Azure Active Directory. And uh, it's very easy to come in and identify the ID for a particular group. Uh, when I have that ID, I can execute a query, and then you can take a look here at some of the properties we retrieve. So for this particular group, I have the date and time the group was created, I have a description of the group, the display name, and I even have the group type, which indicates this is an Office 365 group. Uh, in addition to, to some of the basic properties, uh, I also am informed that this is a highly confidential group, uh, so we, re we retrieve data related to the classification of that group. Mm -hmm. uh, then we have some more um, uh, information related to uh, how to access that group through email in terms of the email addresses that are provisioned with this group. So this classification is something that you can also set through the API, right? Yes, yes. The, the classification you can set through the API. And you can also update things like membership and, and the owners. Uh, so for example, if I wanted to go a little deeper into the group, I could retrieve the entire membership list here. Mm -hmm. uh, so here you can see Alex is a member of this group. Uh, we have his email address, his UPN, and a whole host of, of other info. Uh, now, to go one level deeper, uh, I could even look at the specific list of owners. Uh, so I can see here, I have a much smaller set of users, like Patty is an owner in this group. Uh, and so this allows me to perform uh, you know, certain functions on this group uh, that might tailor to the needs of my business. Okay, sounds good. 
Do you have any other demo or some scenarios that you would like to share with us today? Yeah, so uh, a real common scenario is that a, a customer might need to um, yeah, adapt that group creation flow to their business. And when the a user needs an Office 365 group, the company might want to request some additional information. Uh, for example, who is a second owner? Um, or what is the justification around why they need this Office 365 group? Uh, so today we have a demo where we've actually used the Microsoft Graph API. We've hooked up to a SharePoint task list to capture that information, and then we can kick off a group provisioning uh, using Microsoft Flow. Uh, so here I have a SharePoint task list that captures all that information, uh, and so I've submitted a request for an Office 365 group. Uh, and what it's done is it's sent an email to my manager uh, to actually ask for this Office 365 group. Uh, so my manager can approve this group creation uh, request right here in their email. Uh, and what's happening now is uh, we're actually executing a post request to provision this Office 365 group. Uh, and so we have the information that we've retrieved from that SharePoint task list. Uh, coming down a little bit further, what we're going to be doing is then populating that classification that you just mentioned. Mm -hmm. That's retrieved from the SharePoint task list. Uh, and then we're going to come through, uh, perform a couple of more updates on the membership of that group to make sure we have the owners and the members correct. Uh, and then down here, the very last thing we're going to do is uh, not only create this group for Outlook, but we're going to enable it for Microsoft Teams in one step yep. using Microsoft Graph API. So this is a great example of using the API and using core functionality in our products because you're starting from a SharePoint list, you're using Flow. Flow is then sending an email in Outlook with actionable messages, which you can also use if you're just doing development uh, using the mail APIs. And then tying that all up across groups and teams and uh, assigning owners, the classification, and with very simple code, right? Right, because a lot of these processes normally would be one, two, or multiple steps to actually mm -hmm. create this group and enable it for, for multiple experiences. Uh, so let's take a look at our, our flow and, and see how it's, it's progressing. Uh, so out here, if I scroll down, we'll see this is the flow that we were just executing for this group creation process. And when I drill in, uh, you'll see that our condition was met where our manager approved the creation of that group. And then here is that uh, post request that we were talking about that happened. And we called out to our Azure function. We provisioned that, that Office 365 group. Uh, so now that group is created. So if I come back to Outlook as a user, and I refresh my Outlook experience here, uh, if I scroll down underneath more, I scroll to the very bottom, you'll see here's my new product launch group. So just like that, I have my group here in Outlook, I have my welcome email, and it's ready to go. Uh, the very last thing that we'll take a look at here in Microsoft Teams uh, is that when we provision that group in Outlook, we called out um, to the, the Teams API through Microsoft Graph, and we enabled that group for Microsoft Teams as well. So now I have submitted that request for my group, my managers approved it using an actual message, mm -hmm. and now we have that in Outlook as well as Microsoft Teams, and I can get going. Well, thank you, Mike, for joining us today and for that great demo. And everyone, remember, if you want to get information about how to use the Groups API and more, visit us at graph.microsoft.com. Thank you, and happy coding.